All right, welcome back to the Hard West. This is the second scenario, uh, the second fight of the third scenario, actually. And we are about to infiltrate the church. Um, we have heard that Solomon seemed to be here. We found out that there is a, some sort of a secret passage towards uh, uh, to it. And we're now going to move into it. The Grand Inquisitor Servetes or Cervantes doesn't like to be um, fooled and after being fooled once he now wants to strike back so a tunnel enabled them to enter the premises unseen i'm not the sure if i'm doing it, any everything right i mean we're still having only two characters I'm not 100% sure if we're doing everything right. We only have two characters, and that kind of worries me. Wow, 25 movement is a lot. So apparently, find and kill the lair in the church. We might want to do that here. Um, move it in. Let's open it. No one's here. Move it in. So that's one, two, three enemies already. Gosh, that looks like a difficult map. We're in the middle of the map and everyone can take shots at us. That's not a good place to be at. To Cervantes' surprise. There was but one lone soul inside the church. Her name was Sister Rosario Aiza, and she was a prisoner of the order. Uh, look at that. We could actually play her, so maybe she's the third character. Ooh. Sister Rosa was a supporter of the order until she discovered Delir was using a clairvoyant to stay one step ahead of their enemies. Believing this was blasphemy, she tried to turn the others against him. That's when Delir imprisoned her in the church. He would use her as bait to lure the Grand Inquisitor into a trap. She prayed for deliverance, not realizing that her prayers were answered by the forces of darkness. Okay, that is stupid. You should, as a nun, you should know better than to pray uh, for the forces of darkness. Okay, so it says kill all attackers, uh, which means... Are we going to have like an awesome shootout here in the church? Is that what's going to happen? We're still in the setup phase. And being in the middle does look good. So are we taking a corner and if so which corner would we take like we could take the shack here it's not bad um, standing inside of the shack here here and here or here here and here well the problem is standing here makes us vulnerable against shots from the side so we could position ourselves here and here We'll fight against whatever is coming from here, uh, from this side. Might as well position ourselves here. It's only half cover. This here is probably as soon as someone's coming this way, that wouldn't be full cover. But we could stay here for the for the beginning. And on uh, the other side. I mean, standing here gives us a good line of sight. Fortunately, we don't have. Hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have a gravestone like right here. That would be an awesome, or right here, that would be an awesome uh, uh, piece of cover. We could position ourselves here, and yeah, uh, that looks not too shabby. We do have. Um, a ricochet object here, which is never bad. This here could be something. Like we could move up to here. 
and use actually the this corner here well this house here also looks helpful I think the high ground definitely helps hmm the house isn't bad either uh, enemies tend to not really understand how to deal with houses so the question is which corner are we going to take this here looks a bit short on cover feels like we're then trapped this here might be better I like this depends on how we're positioning ourselves there okay the most uh, the most important part um, here is we need to make sure that we're not being flanked the nun doesn't have any healing so if she's going to be flanked we do have a problem Okay, so we're looking at one, two, oh my god, three, four. I've seen something moving here. Five, six, three. Look at that for the nun uh, these areas seem to be smaller because uh, they kind of know her which means we might want to use her to to bypass uh, them so I think I'm going to try position ourselves back here and here that might be a thing Cannot threaten enemies when other enemies see you. Oh, okay. Okay, this here does not offer any cover at all. That sucks. I was hoping it would. That's going to trigger. We don't want that yet. We need to move the sniper into position. So we do have a, a weapon that can shoot twice and it'll deal five damage. These guys might die right away. Do we have any items for preparation?
I mean, we could go with chain kill, but that would be 90... 90 luck. For each enemy you kill during this turn, replenish 1 action points and 2 hit points. That's not bad. Let me see, if I would move over here, whom would he be able to see? He would see this one extra guy. I'm just thinking if we're starting with chain shot how many of them he could kill. So, we're looking at one, two, three. Uh, he could kill three here, move over to the other side of the cart and kill this guy, and reload. And that would cost us 90 luck, right? Well, we wouldn't be able to ricochet afterwards, but I think... Well, we do have Mandrake roots. It's definitely a good start. If we don't do it, we would only kill two. The nun would kill this guy. Gabriel would kill this guy, and this guy would be... Would be left uh, unharmed. Plus, we do have uh, this gentleman on our side. Well, I think we could try to use chain kill. Why not? I mean, let's try it. So, revolver. We're going to go with chain kill. There's one down, and the fight begins. That's two down. We're still on full um, action points. He missed that guy, but we're hitting him now. If the nun would move to here, she would still have cover and she could take out this guy. And I mean, she could take this guy out even without cover. Ah, he's down to one HP. I was wrong. She cannot take out this guy. Hmm. Moving into cover. And we're at least killing one further person. Reloading. It didn't start as uh, I would have uh, suspected it would. Oh, that's a very good position. We need to break this flank, like immediately. Okay, it was a good start. Let's try to get the guys from uh, this side. 
I suspect we will be able to flank him from here. 71% should be good enough to kill him. We could move up to here and probably kill this guy without taking a shot. Yeah. But why does it only deal one point of damage? Like, we should be able to flank him from here. Apparently that's not the case though. That's disappointing. Moving into half cover. Yeah, we're barely... A if I would have moved here, I would have seen this guy. Nah. Alright, let's make sure we're not being flanked. None of these two maneuvers uh, worked. The enemy decides to do something extremely stupid and just moves in. Let's start on this side. So if we were to shoot at the cowboy, that would be 8 damage. Which other targets do we have? Only the guy upstairs. Can we ricochet something upstairs? No. We ricochet anything. No valid targets in range. That's bad. So I'm still going to take a shot. No, you know what? We're going to eat uh, the mandrake powder to get some hell, uh, some some luck back over time. And we're shooting these guys. Good. So, first things first. This gentleman here needs to die. She didn't have enough movement. I already checked. I could have moved here elsewise and taken the shot, um, which would have been the other alternative. Oh my god. He, he just literally moves into the position where he gets flanked again. Reloading, then we're killing this guy. Yeah. 
Watch all shots fired with less than 100 accuracy last two turns. Um, yes, please, we're going to do that. And we are going to kill oh, this gentleman in the meantime. Who had enough luck to dodge. I think so far our positioning looks solid. They seem to be unaware of how to get behind us. And our sniper here, over on this side. can basically collect all of these gentlemen. There we go. Two further kills. Good job. So after this round our dodging should be gone. I like the ability a lot. Didn't know how how it worked, but that is a very, very strong ability. I mean next round we can dodge again. Wow. That's really good. So we're moving out of line of sight, mainly to reload, and also because we wouldn't really, uh, we wouldn't really have a good angle on this guy. Uh, Gabriel, however, seems to have a pretty decent angle. And we're going to use our revolver to maybe at least injure this guy. There we go. Always use the first round for reloading if, if you are not intending to move. Did he just position himself in the open here? We need to reload the weapons, we can't just fan fire. I want to make sure that we have enough ammunition. This guy dies anyways. And we should have a pretty solid... Yeah, we have a very solid angle on him.
Let's use the time for reload. Okay, everything is reloaded. I think that we can advance just a little bit now. Yeah, we need to deal with the guy up here. So we flank this gentleman. And there is the sign that we only have three attackers left. I'm waiting so that he will take another shot and will give me luck. Because then I can use uh, the dodge ability again and start moving into his direction. Maybe we're just uh, maybe we're just uh, continuing to fan fire at him. At some point, he will simply um, run out of hit points. The nun certainly um, takes the most damage. Oh well, not at full cover. Never mind. I thought he would also have a sniper rifle that deals a lot of damage at full cover. Apparently he doesn't. We are slowly but surely wiggling him down. Probably should have not taken the shot um, with a weapon that just deals one damage. Yeah, he had, uh, he still had too much luck. Next turn, we will be able to finish him. In the meantime, the nun has about no hit points left so we're going to leave her behind there seems to be someone down there
Reloading, reloading, just to make sure that we don't need to do it once we're approaching the house. Alright, one enemy left. Our enormous speed allows us to just jog around the house and take this flanking shot, although he just put himself into cover. Sister Rosa was now free. Nice. Very nice. Oh, that was a solid shootout. Sister Rosa that he was a servant of light and wanted what she wanted. An end to Solomon Delir's blasphemy. Rosa directed them to someone who might know the identity of the clairvoyant. Gustav Wedholm, a local banker who was once the Order's paymaster. He was an opium addict and an embezzler and was forced to leave in disgrace. Okay, so he's but a tre uh, of his treater. Former position, he knew the identity of every member of the secret society. Oh. The Chinese man, uh, man welcomed them with a smile which turned into a frown when he told him that he only wanted to speak uh, with one of his patrons. He rolled his eyes uh, as he waved them into the room. Pesek uh, knew these places were unfaced. Scissor Asia was disgusted by the Eddic sloth, finally beheld Gustav Wellman in all of his confused, bemused glory. They asked him to find some pants. It took an hour for Weldon to come to his senses, but through a combination of kindness and cruelty, Cervantes brought him back into awareness. Weldon explained that he is no longer a member, uh, and he had never been entrusted uh, with one of the cipher pieces himself. However, he knew the identities of several order operators in the region. Uh, though he had a rough idea where there are the whereabouts. Uh, details uh, such as names and appearances escaped him. For a price, however, he could uh, recall the associates and find the blanks. So, how much does he want? 200 per? Oh my god. So we're having 900. Do they all cost 200? Yeah. So I guess the question is, do we want to invest 800 gold if we can just let the devil take care of it? Do we really need the gold? The answer is probably we need some. But I would be interested to see what happens if we're if we're actually doing everything right and getting the information instead of burning everything down. So here's the distillery. They came to Brendan Hennessy's distillery. Let's use the information at hand. So I want to surprise Hennessy and tied him up. Then they claimed, uh, uh, climbed with him in, onto a catwalk and attracted the attention of the workers below. He told them that their boss uh, the high priest of the cult of a devil of worshippers. Worse, he had been cheating on their paychecks, using extra cash to pay for his dark rituals. He said if a man were truly good, he would resist the flames. If not, he would burn. Little did the workers know that Cervantes had soaked um, Hennessy's clothes in alcohol. Uh, the flames spread across his body immediately as the workers cheered. So I let the man die, twistling and flailing uh, in the flames rather than putting out his, of his misery. When the fire went out, he recovered the cipher piece. This guy is truly brutal. The corporation saloon was the typical western saloon. 
Cervantes stormed into the saloon and accused Neubacher of spying for the Austro-Hungarian Empire to prepare for an invasion by his emperor. Uh, whilst most had never heard of that place, they were quick to beat the life out of the men. Cervantes demanded that the traitor's body was burned to ashes and the crowd was more than happy to oblige. Passing jugs of whiskey as the pyre's flame lit the night. When they disappeared, the Inquisitor recovered the cipher piece and rode off. Dozens of men worked in the mine which supplied iron for the entire region. Sawandas went to the mine's foreman, Michael Chaffin, and told him about the demon worshipper in his midst. Horrified, the foreman asked who could it be. Sawandas said he felt awful disclosing the man's name. The foreman begged him. Finally, Cervantes uh, relented and told the foreman it was a Rapskins. The foreman said they should bury Rapskins alive. Cervantes told him uh, he would need access to the body afterwards for purification. So it was uh, the miners bound Rap, uh, Rapskins and shoved him dynamite down his throat. They cheered as they detonated him and Cervantes saw the glint of the cipher piece as it flew across the torch-lit cavern. He recovered it and made his exit, the cheering of the man at his back. And lastly, the brothel. Um... Every member of the order in the area was dead, but the cipher was still incomplete. The Inquisitor hoped that Benholm had more information to offer. Cervantes entered the establishment and confronted Madame Hosmer. When he proclaimed the Bernard Lacrosse has been worshipping evil Indian spirits, the man was <laughs> defenestrated without delay. He found Cypher's piece in the ruptured abdomen. I can only repeat, uh, this guy seems to have the gift of going to a crowd of people just telling blatant, obvious lies, and then everyone's just going apeshit on a random person. When they revisited the den, they found Wedholm sleeping with his hands folded in his chest, clutching an envelope addressed to the Grand Inquisitor. The message was from a woman named Cassandra, who said she was being held prisoner in an ab abandoned mine. It said the clairvoyant was there too, along with many of the order members, and provided uh, copious information about the compound. The letter from a supposed ally was an interesting turn of events. However, the motivations of the sender were a mystery. Why would, why would someone from the cult send us that information? That really doesn't make any sense. Cervantes hoped to finally deal with the clairvoyant who remained a thorn in his side. Okay, so... I like this dodging thing. Activate uh, in, in order to dodge all of the bullets. That was pretty handy for him. I really liked it. Unfortunately, here is a straight flush, and you can hardly argue with a straight flush in terms of not being good. So... Getting the extra hit points, getting the extra aim, getting the option to dodge, Shriek is really, really good. Three damage for everyone. Very, very good. And the bonus of plus one damage, plus one max HP is also very good. So he's running around with plus two damage at the end of the day. Oh, that's a great one as well. Exchange helps with a target character. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Okay, so if we were to take the Joker for him, then we would um, still have Sniper Shot. We could have Chain Kill, which is giving him the option to heal up and kill a lot of them. 
shoot at all enemies inside in sequence up to six uh, times. That's another very, very strong ability. And prayer plus um, prayer uh, plus luck really helps out. Royal Flush plus three maximum HP. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm not going to argue. That's a very, very, very good bonus. And the Nun takes the option to exchange health with a target character. That's not bad. She can heal up for only 50 luck. She has 7 hit points. Probably could require some more hit points, but that's okay. Good, so looking at uh, the items, I think the Nun still has a very bad loadout. So we might want to invest some money in uh, in improving her loadout. First and foremost, she has no healing device and... Oh, Angelic Sphere. That is known about the content and the makers of these covered glass containers. Restores hit points in a radius. Yep, well, that's great. I like it. And maybe we'll just give her another healing elix uh, elixir. So she has this shotgun, which I don't like at all, and the six shooter, which is somewhat okay, but she could, per uh, she could definitely require better weapons. So let's start with that. She requires something for the mid-range and something for uh, close range. Like this here, Volcano Pistol is pretty good, 5 damage and 8 ammunition. That's just simply better than the one that she currently has. It doesn't have Fanfire, but it has very solid single shots and 5 damage is good. Plus 2 damage against target and half cover is great. And we might want to consider giving her uh, the Rimi Borgen Rifle, which is another 5 damage uh, weapon. Oh shit, I just lost 5 gold pieces. Well, never mind. And we still need a trinket for her, I suppose. She has no trinket either. Yeah, we need a trinket for her and her movement rate with 17 is not really good. Let's see what the Fate Trader has to offer. There's another Doomsday Watch or another Snake Leather Boot. I think... Considering the circumstances, 6 movement and 1 damage isn't too bad. Uh, she has 6 hit points then. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one option. The other option is the 2 damage trinket, which isn't bad either. I think we're going to go with the snake leather boots. Of course, having one more hit point would be very helpful for her. Specifically, if she would have some cards to do that. But yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, she currently has an extra hit point from that card. So this card and the boots kind of offset one another. That's good enough. 
7 hit points is a bit better than 6 because some weapons deal 6 damage and uh, therefore she would be out of one shot range. But I think the overall the 6 movement and the ability to deal 6 damage herself is vastly superior. Okay. So... Let's take a look. This here is the next scenario and I think we're going to cut the video here. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, uh, don't forget to comment down below and give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much and see you in the next episode.